I was like, did I miss anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, for this, for this panel, we actually had a, a special moderator. Uh, it's uh, David Abramowitz. Hi, it's me. <laughs> so, uh, so I, 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 yes, I put together a few questions that of uh, great interest on the meaning of life and, and, and things Don't get and, started on that. And, and things like that because um, I, I thought I could ask some questions and someone else wouldn't. Um, and I just, I just want to put this, I, I just want to tell you in advance that these, some of these questions will have no relevance whatsoever about the meaning of life and what everything is about. Um, and you can refuse to answer them at your leisure. So I'm going to start out with a big one. Okay. 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 And, and this is to the two of you. Boxes or briefs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are gone. No. No okay. How old were you when you first had intercourse? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the inappropriate question part. <laughs> Social <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something you could you, actually, I was going to say, something you, you quite possibly could catch something from, but any kind of intercourse today. Yes, indeed. Are we not going to answer that question? 18. 18. Oh, God. Um, I'm not going to answer that. Okay. <laughs> Without my lawyer present. Okay, well, I thought I would just begin. I thought I'd just begin the. the I, mean, I was with in that. England, of Wales. It was, it was, times um, were different. <laughs> okay. Now, now I got another question. The first question is: What was the to both of you? What was the worst Highlander episode you were in? That's a great question. <laughs> That's a long list. My God. Um, I can't. Remember. Okay. You can't remember? Were we in Highlander? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, forget that. No, 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 no. Are you including the movies? No. <laughs> the fifth movie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Okay, yeah, I mean, the, the, if I was in it, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Anything you were in, I got it. Okay, next question. Um, can you give us a story, um, just just and without names, about the most raucous evening that the two of you had together, <laughs> while, while you while you were working on Highlander? There must be some evening that you can tell us something about that began with strong drink. <laughs> I think they all began with strong drink. <laughs> uh, most of them continued with strong drink and. I don't remember the ending so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's just it. I mean, yeah, you know, those are the ones you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, probably, you know, but, mm, at a convention more so than doing the show. Because, you know, we had to go to work you know, the next day or something. And where a couple of these conventions, they've been, uh, you know, some <laughs> several days without sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the, you know, those days where you were just. You know, and you finish and you go have some drink and just drink and Because when Bill Panzer was there, right? You know, yeah. he, oh my God. So there was always liquor involved, right? Yeah, I, I mean, some of, some of the times when we were filming in Paris, uh, I, I mean, I, I know I've turned up on set still drunk from the night before <laughs> and filmed scenes still drunk <laughs> wow. from the night before and then had to go lie down between kind of shooting yeah. with the camera turning right, just have to go and, and uh, lie down and try and grab sleep when you could because cause we'd been out and we'd, we'd go out to yeah, you know, go to a bar first, and then and then we'd go on to a restaurant, and then Bill would have some friend or some contact, and we'd end up in in, in some little back street alley that, that wasn't really a restaurant; was more of just someone's house. And just <coughs> fabulous dining, really, really great company. And, uh, and then it all got would get hazy, and then suddenly you'd be in the trailer and. People would be saying, no, you've got to come to set now. <laughs> um, who am I? <laughs> Highlander had some um, very difficult people to work with yeah. on the, um, 
on the executive level of the show. Yeah. Um, so I, I would, notably, Bill, may, may his soul rest, Bill Panzer could be difficult to work with. Yeah. <laughs> and Marla Ginsburg Marla, yeah, yeah. could be really difficult to yeah, work yeah. with. Which one of the two of them do you think were, on occasion, most difficult to deal with? Well, I didn't really have to deal with them on the kind of level that you did, you know. I mean, yeah. you could tell that, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, I would say Marla would be <laughs> in, in a certain situations, and she could have the uh, ability to, to really screw things up. <laughs> and. Uh, but but never really having to deal with them on the level that you did, you know. Like we just we just had to show up, and they they had made the decisions away from us, and we didn't. I didn't have to be a, a part of those decisions, you know, that, that we made. But uh, I, I would imagine that Marla would be more difficult than Bill, just from my point of view. Yeah, I'd uh, say my, I never. I'm not sure I even met Marla at any point. Really? So yeah. So. Uh, so on that basis, would have to be Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then, but uh, you know, all my my dealings with Bill also they they were not they were not difficult dealings. Right. They were always social. Uh, the only yeah. time yeah. the only time I really had any kind of uh, of kind of complex business dealing with him was oh, which movie what, was it? The, I don't know, one of the movies uh, where there, there was a there was a lot of wrangling between agents and. and People trying to figure out how how much time I was going to be there and what I was going to get, and, and it, it just went on and on. It was it was stupid. And eventually, I, I got a call from Bill. And he just said, "How much do you want to get paid?" And, and in thirty seconds, we sorted it out. It was, it was, done. It was fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, who is your favorite guest star to work with in on the show? I guess uh, Roger. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Daltrey, yeah. Roger yeah. Daltrey, man. Roger Daltrey, man. <laughs> <laughs> the whom? Oh. And, and a, I'm just a, a very cool guy, very... Yeah, yeah, he, he was fun, you know, and once again, you know, going out, and you, you know, he'd fit the bill. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I imagine I would say Roger, I mean, uh, and though not, not, not a guest star, but, but Peter, I love working with Peter, you know. Yeah, you guys were magic. Right, yeah, that was you good. had you had was good, good stuff, you know. Well, yeah, the other Peter. <laughs> <laughs> there was another Peter. <laughs> I, I, I I think that was probably because of the I, I just I'm gonna not make this funny, but I think it was from from us from yeah. the, from from the writers. Uh, it was the both of you the depth of the humanity that you brought to your characters because um, you were both both a little broken, but in the, in the characters, but really whole as human beings in 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 the characters, and that's you're really whole as human beings in real life, and that I think. Um, it's, it was only natural that the two of you, because there was no, I don't believe there was, there was, I don't would say that there probably wasn't one moment of bullshit between the two of you that, that was all. Yeah, yeah, I, I felt that way. I mean, we just, I remember, you know, when we, when we first met in Paris, you know, it was like we immediately had a, you know, a rapport and, you know, something going on. And, and we just, I think we just used that as a, you know, that, that, uh, whether for, for good or bad, when we were mad at each other, or when we were, you know, hanging out together, there was a, there was something real about our relationship on and off the camera. So, right. and, and I think that you both understood irony. You oh, both yeah. were touched with a little cynicism from being bumped around. Who me? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> when you got on the show. Um, how long did you think it would last? You know, episode to episode. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about the business. You know, you never, you have no idea because it's, it's not, it's not under your, it's not your control. I mean, you're just, a, you know, the, this toy being played with in a way. So it was, uh, I mean, 
my audition for the thing was I had drinks with Bill Pants. <laughs> and so, that was my audition too. <laughs> I mean, they, they, you know, there there had been other actors that were they, they were recording to be, and they all got turned out, and they were going to start shooting in three or four days, and. I guess uh, somebody, you know, I, I had done the show Wise Guy and I was in Vancouver and they didn't have to fly me in or pay for the hotel and all that stuff. And so I just went, and, and, and literally um, they, they, the agent said, yeah, we're, we can have uh, meet with the producer and they're going to, uh, they promised four episodes. And uh, anyway, five years later, they still had a job. So, but, but, you know, I, you never know. I mean, because like when we were doing Wise Guy, uh, we were in the, the fourth season, and uh, we were just about to break for lunch, and uh, the producer came in and said, you know, they pulled the plug. That was it. We hit you, know, you know, goodbye, get, take your stuff and go home. And it was over just like that. And, and this was, a, you know, this was sort of a, you know, a successful show. We had had Emmy nominations and Golden Globe and World Awards and stuff, and then one day, you know, we were just about to shoot a scene and they came in and pulled the plug, go home. So, you know, that's the nature of the business, right? Yeah. I mean, for, for me, it, it, Highlander was not a show that was playing in the UK, so I knew nothing about it. It was uh, just uh, uh, a, an episode of this TV show that was filming in Paris. Uh, there were a couple of pages to read uh, and I, I taped an audition in uh, in the, the casting director's office in London, uh, I, I when when they called and uh, and made the offer, it was for that one episode, with the possibility of coming back for the the season finale for the character to be killed off. Um, so my expectation was one episode. I mean that there was. I didn't expect anything else to happen because there, there's always, oh, we might bring the character back. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was, it was the, the good thing about Highlander is that we, I think, we, we were really flexible. So if somebody was, was good, we could actually try and keep them and write for them because we were just interested in doing a really good show. And because it wasn't really a star-driven show, except the first couple of years when they, when when Marla sold first year when Marla show, show, sold the show to the Japanese, that would have rock stars on it, which is really I told the story before. That there weren't a lot of a lot of stars, I mean name stars, and it was just great that we were able to find Peter, and that was Bill Panson. Um, you know, we we. we Look, the, the, his um, audition was great, and um, and Bill just said we watched it together, and Bill said, "This is the guy," and I said, "Okay," and it turned out to be um, very prophetic. And the same thing happened with with um, Elizabeth. Um, you know, you, you you find gold, and you don't want to give it up. And Jim was a great break, and we moved him into the bar. It was made it even better because uh, he could play music, and it, that added a great moment to our show, I thought. Um, and we were very lucky, very, very <laughs> lucky in getting it. Um, so I yeah, know. What, what, what's, what, like, following on from that, that line of thought, what's, what's nice about doing a show like this is, is the conversation that happens between the writers on one continent and the actors on a different continent that, that where what they put on the page you kind of play around with and send a, ver a variation of it back that they then see in the dailies that they then pick up things that they put into the next story that the character then grows, uh, the depth grows because because there is this back and forth between you know in a, in a movie, a one-off movie. You just this, these are the words. That's the story. It's over. This character is going to develop, and you can play off uh, strengths or relationships that you see in real life. Yeah, I, I think one of my uh, you know, 
I'm not saying humbly strengths as a writer, is that I would steal a good idea from anybody. <laughs> and I and and these guys brought more to the table, and I thought that it would be foolish. You know, I've known a lot of writers who who write who, on shows, and on one of the shows I was on, um, uh, the, the star was Robert Urich and Spencer for Hire. And not, I was only on for an episode, but. Um, and then there was the executive producer demanded that, he, that Robert Urich recite every word exactly as it was written. And, um, and then Urich had the executive producer banned from the set. The executive, <laughs> the executive producer hired, you know, one of those police sound, sound cars with long range microscopes. <laughs> <laughs> well, not microscopes. Um, uh, microphones. Microphones. That he, so he could hear the dialogue from two blocks away. This is honest to God, honest to God the truth. And that, I used to think this guy was an idiot because the most important thing is to have actors be comfortable with the material and to make it theirs so you got, you'd get real characters. And as long as the intent of the scene was the same, it's the intent of the scene that I, that I always cared about. I didn't care about how we got there, because it was all about the story. And if you could elevate the story, everything got better. And um, I needed all the help I could get. <laughs> it ain't Shakespeare. No, it ain't Shakespeare, <laughs> actually. Um, so, yes, great questions. On that same note, hmm? on that same note related, Josh Reed, when he was writing Firefly, gave each of his characters secret that he didn't tell to anyone else. Was there a secret about Minos or Joe that you knew that you didn't tell them or wouldn't tell them? No. Um, <laughs> I, I was never that gifted. Um, I, I, mean, I was just trying to survive. We had a very small writing staff um, and half the scripts were written in the first couple of years by French writers, so everything had to be rewritten completely because English was not their first language. And so we were just trying as hard as we could. If we got it out and they shot it and, they, and, it, re, and it worked, mm -hmm. we were very, very grateful. That's why there's so, there are a few losers on the show because every seven working days, another show had to go out and there was, it, it just wasn't enough hours to come up with really good stuff all the time. But there was enough good stuff. There was enough good stuff that made it, you know, enough great moments, enough great moments. So, um, I, was, I was thinking about this since we were sitting here and I thought about it just before Peter came in, but, um, so if we were, if Highlander was gonna be made like now with today's, you know, market and the platforms that are available and, and um, you know, with streaming and instant on demand and everything drops at the same time and that kind of thing. How do you think that would have affected how Highlander would have developed and would have been more successful or less successful? Or just any thoughts you have? It would have been, it would have been a very different show today um, because um, it was, the way we did shows then was they were episodic. And, um, we try to write them or so that they could if they change the order they would people would still understand because you never knew what people were what what countries you know Japan might play at like episode three and seven better for whatever reason and they might switch them and do things like that um, so we had to write individual shows except for the the transition shows when we went to Paris with and the and, um, we had to write them like that. Now, today, there would be um, an A, a B, and a C story. There would be an immortal story that ran maybe, it would be 10 episodes, say, that would run throughout the 10 episodes of the characters that would return. There would be some parts of a story where you would close it at the end of the episode, and then there would be running other stories. It would be more serialized very much and it would have been structured very differently because um, that's the way that's what the market wants right now they want something so much of it is streaming 
So they watched all 10 episodes together, it would be one more coherent story, which would have taken a lot longer in the beginning. One of the reasons why um, uh, you see eight shows and six shows and 10 show years is to, is to do complex storylines, multiple complex storylines, and to tell the, instead of vertically telling the stories, which is beginning, middle, and end of every episode, is to run them horizontally where you give bits and pieces. It takes a little longer to plug all of those in, and you can't have as many outside writers write the shows because the continuity is really important. So I think that's the way it would be very different. Would you have liked that? I would have liked that personally. Um, be, um, but you know, as, as when I came in the show, when I came on in the show in the fifth or sixth episode, um, there was nothing to shoot the next week. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, zero. Wow. So it would be. I wasn't thinking for the first year. I wasn't thinking in terms of of building stories I would, or creating long story arcs. I was just thinking of getting the job done so I could get paid. So, um, as he mentioned, many, if not most of us or all of us, Highlander has a special meaning to us. It caught us in a certain part of our life or something that whatever. But for you guys all, you you know, Highlander was part of your life, but you also have had other shows, other careers, other, you know, whatever. So your answer does not have to be Highlander. But what what is the one um, that has meant the, that has touched your lives, that has maybe affected you more so than some of the others? You mean which? Which it, show or which episode? Which, which, not which episode. Um, like Colby's or Highlander or, you know, uh, so, Peter or any, any of the things you've been in. What has stuck with you, meant the most to you as far as your body of work? So, uh, I, not, um, not counting Doctor, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, for, Highlander for me was life changing. I mean, mm -hmm. on the most profound level. I, I was living in a different country. Uh, I was I was living a, a completely different life, and Highlander and the consequences of that of that first episode. You know, you know the camera pans around. There's this guy sitting on the floor eating pizza and drinking beer. Changed everything. <clears throat> Where I live, uh, who I'm married to, uh, my the fact that I have a, a kid in. New York City in college. I mean, all of it is spun from that that one moment. Um, so, without question, uh, Highlander. It was the most significant job I, I ever did. Jim, uh, I, I would have to say that uh, when I first got on uh, the show Wise Guy, you know, I, I had. Uh, well, you know, I majored in theater in university. This was what I wanted to do. But then I quit school and I ended up in the army. And all this shit happened to me. And I lost my legs on the 26th of February in 1972 in a car accident. And, and so my this acting career was like, you know, forget about it. But 15 years to the day, February 26th, is when I, I had gone. Well, I, I, I had been on vacation. I had gone, gone to Mexico and came back and had a a message saying, oh, there's this, you got an audition for him. Wow. And it's a, a guy in a wheelchair. Okay, great. And I showed up. I, I had not seen the, anything. I mean, I, I didn't see the script. I knew nothing about it. And I went in and uh, did what I could do. And uh, later that day, the uh, producer said, we want to see you on, well, the, the casting director, we want to see you on tape. And uh, blah, blah, blah. But on the 26th of February, 1987, I signed a contract with CBS to be on this show, Wise Guy. And uh, once again, I mean, everything, my life was different after that, you know. I was uh, just uh, struggling, you know, living in my car, guitar player, right? So, you know, all of a sudden I had this job and uh, on, this, on this really great ground, groundbreaking show. You know, Wise Guy, when we, that first season, we had a tough time because we did the arts. I mean, it was like we, we would do six shows. 
the overall of the story. They were not, you know, at the end of the show, it was not like Jake and the Fat Man, well, well the bad guy's in jail now, you know. But no, it was like this ongoing thing, and the, and the bad guy was actually the, the you know, most intriguing character on the show, and you know, that kind of, you know, it really changed a lot of stuff. But just being on that show, and then, you know, it, and it, it led to, the years we were on that, you know, some I had what they called Q, right? And, and, and that's, you know, they, they were able to phone me up to be on Highlander. So, I mean, that, 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 uh, that day, you know, uh, February 26th of 72 and 87, really were people. And this is an interesting thing my wife had noticed. On my birth certificate, uh, I, was, I was born at 2.26 in the morning. So, <laughs> so, you know, the, important numbers. 226. It was a, so, make what will you will of it. <laughs> but that, that, that was really, I, I guess, you know, that, that day of, of finally, you know, when I was able to tell my folks I'm going to be on TV, you know, so I'm going to be on the front of a TV guy. <laughs> and all the grief that I had caused them for so many years. All of a sudden, you know, well, he finally did something with this way. <laughs> For me, Highlander was the most important show, um, just because it it was the first show that I really ran, and the, the writing, and um, and but the show that that really changed my career and taught me more was I did a show called Cagney and Lacey. And I wrote for Cagney and Lacey, and um, and this was the the the. Every show that I'd done before that, the writing room was run by an autocrat. The executive producer was God, and it was, it was difficult because sometimes the executive producers, they, were, they could be decent writers, but a number of them got some jobs by, by being a great politician and by never taking responsibility and passing the buck. And they weren't that great, but, but and the, 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 the weaker they were, the greater their vanity was. So it made it very difficult. On, on, um, on Cagney and Lacey, it was the first show, and it taught me more than anything else, was um, that the material was the most important thing. The script was the most important thing. And they, they would throw the story down in front of the entire writing staff. And whoever had the best idea won. When, they turned in a, when the script was turned in, Everybody would give notes, and there, it was only about the material, and it wasn't about. And you could, the executive producer could be outvoted, if, if, or could be reasoned with, and that taught me. A, that really taught me that that was possible, um, and that was much more comfortable doing that, which enabled me to steal a good idea from anybody, which is uh, what I did often. Um, that was a really good question. Yes. Um, I know that Big Finish no longer has a license for Highlander, but audio, Big Finish, they did the, you did an audio for them. But I know the audio books and that kind of audio drama is really, I think, increasing in popularity. And for, for things like Doctor Who, it's allowed actors who no longer look like they did 50 years ago <laughs> to do really great, you know, really great work. And I was wondering if, if, for all of you guys, if you if some format opened for Highlander audio drama, whether it be Big Finish or some other company, would you be willing to either write or do audio work for that? Oh, sure. For, for Highlander. Okay, so we're actors, so uh, <laughs> but that question has only one answer. Would you be willing to work? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you be my day rate? No. Uh, do you have food? Uh, <laughs> yeah. For me, um, I think it, it, uh, it's not so much a question of wanting to do it; it's a question of rights. Yeah. And and the, the whole and it's it's and that's gotten more complicated. Because but in an ideal world, if the I would love to do sold. I would yeah, love yeah, to yeah. write more Highlanders. I would really, I would just love to do it uh, beyond a shadow. Of the most fun writing. Yeah. And, and that, that would be the kind of job I could still do. So. That's what I was thinking. You could. Yeah. Can you imagine? In, well, the guy's going to be out for 55 minutes. I got enough time. To... 
Just wheel all this stuff in here. Don't touch anything. <laughs> my question, so I'm going to do something similar um, <laughs> about producing Highlander today. Is there a story that you wanted to tell on Highlander back then that you couldn't, but you could do today? And I thought I have a second question, which is, I, we talk to a lot of Highlander fans, and it seems we're also a lot of fans of Lucifer, and Lucifer is also a show that plays with the morality, what it means to be a good person or not, and I was wondering if you see that show. If you've seen Lucifer, and you have any thoughts about, about I've seen a number of episodes, and it was uh, great fun because you have characters who are immortal, who mm -hmm. lived yeah. in, who lived within doubt and, and doubted themselves, which was always mm -hmm. a great, and were a little broken. Those are always great characters. So yeah, I've seen it. I like the show. Um, is there a story I would have liked to have told? You know. There are a couple of areas we couldn't touch then, and it maybe we, when we had we had tried, um, but and that's because different countries wouldn't allow, wouldn't broadcast the show because it was politically like a show with any kind of thing on abortion, a show with any kind of thing on suicide, a show with with. Um, um, you could you could have a certain amount of violence and beheading was real, which is fun. Um, but th there was basically nothing, you know. I, I not it's not that I was tapped out, but I wasn't conscious. It would take me a while to think of another. How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Question, which is always the best. When always for me, when always there was a question that people could to talk about, a philosophical question, like the difference between honor and vanity, um, 